Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a wonderful, eight, almost 80 degrees here in New Jersey. Unbelievable. Global warming, whatever it is. Hey, we love it, right? We love it for now. We know the doom and gloom of winter is coming. Don't forget to change your clocks back. So hey, get the Prozac ready because now it's going to start getting dark at 4.30. Before we go on, guys, just a quick reminder, if you are getting uh, value from this channel, I'm assuming you are because you're still uh, watching, all we ask is drop a like, uh, subscribe to the channel so we can grow the channel, so we can help you out with more uh, content on a weekly basis. And the most important part is we could all grow organically. So if you could be so kind, drop a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and we continue on, right? So let's talk about the tape. So when you look at uh, when you look at yesterday's session, right? You had the jobs number come on. Actually, Friday session right now is today's uh, Saturday. Well, it would be yesterday. So you had the you had the jobs number came out. Strong numbers came out once again, just like the last time. Again, sometimes good equals bad. Sometimes bad equals bad. Sometimes even good equals good. Market didn't know exactly what to think of it yesterday. Again, we'll get to individual pivots, but there's something that we always talk about when there's an old data that just says, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? Everybody, everybody uh, kind of knows that phrase. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And the question was, was the market up or down on Friday, right? If you look at the scoreboard, you know, if you're not an active trader, you, you turn around and go, what do you mean? What kind of, what kind of stupid question is that? The Dow's up. Uh, 400 points, the S&P is up five, uh, 50 points, and the NASDAQ composites up 132 points. What, what are you trading, Dan, the, the Bangladesh exchange? Now, before, you, before you, you come to commit me to an asylum for asking that question, let's look at, you know, let's look at what, what exactly happened on Friday. Number one, as we know, technology has been really the ugly, redheaded stepchild of the four major indexes. Yeah, before, uh, you know, before we had any type of resumption of selling starting on Monday, we had a really strong market uh, for everything, for every single index, for the exception uh, of, the, of, of the Qs. Uh, last week, right? You had this magical run in the diamonds, uh, really, really big run uh, on the SPX and poor old little uh, NASDAQ composite just couldn't get going, right? Not only could it get not get going, uh, all their leaders, right? Your, your Microsofts, your Apples, uh, not even necessarily Apple, we'll get to Apple in a second, Microsoft, Meta, uh, Google, and Amazon all blew up on earnings. You guys remember that? And no matter how much they tried to prop up the market, eventually, right, even with Apple's help the previous Friday, the market couldn't just let go of the selling bias and they never reclaimed the 50-day moving average. And after they started making sales on Apple and they said, hey, wait a minute, the earnings maybe were not that great, everything started going down with it as well. So even when we had that really good monster week last week when the Dow went up, six and a half percent if you guys remember the nasdaq somehow went up two but it was a little bit different this week and when you look at the final tallies you turn around and go okay you know the dow is only down one and a half percent that's not bad at all considering we were down we were up over six percent the s p you know it gave you know we were still up almost five percent last week gave back 3.3 percent here is the multiple right the nasdaq composite not only did not run when everything else ran uh, it lost, gained, gained about 2% last week and lost just under 6% this week. And that really, really stood out. And when you look at Friday's action, and again, the jobs number came in strong and initially they rallied the market to sell it off, to rally the market, to really, really sell it off. And towards the end of the day, they started rallying up again. You turned around and you go, how is this market even up, right? Cloud names got absolutely destroyed. We'll get to the individual pivots in a second, right? You have the cloud names just destroyed, right? B-I-L-L, massacred. N-E-T, right? Massacred. D-D-O-G, right? Massacred. Snow, massacred. And again, there's a lot of these names, right? Uh, T-T-D as well, 
right? Massacred as well, right? You have all these stuff. Apple could not stop selling, it really could not stop selling. We got all the way down to the, lip, um, to the daily Bollinger Band bottom channel here. Microsoft until later in the day could not rally. Finally, you got some dead cow bounces on a name like Amazon. So I get how the, the NASDAQ was up, right? You got a little bit of dead cat bounce on Amazon, which is still put in a red candle, which basically shows there's still a, a, a lower close than open, right? It gapped up and then it went lower, right? Google had finally had a little dead cat bounce as well. Microsoft, they got absolutely destroyed this week, which was fun, was, was absolutely amazing mover this week on, Am, on Microsoft. The downside finally had a dead cat bounce. And when you look, you, you, you look up and you say to yourself, well, how the hell can somebody turn around if you trade technology and say the, mar the market, right? The, the market was actually up for the day. And again, we say this all the time, guys. You know, don't structure your day. Don't structure your thinking based on the scoreboard, right? The bright, the bright lights. When, when you're an, a passive investor or a passive trader and you looked at Friday's session, it goes, man, oh man, everything must be ripping, says the social media trader right it's just, it's just a social media trader but the reality is we all know for the, for the active trader we all know what happened on friday uh there was phenomenal selling all across the board on uh software names cloud names right and the most interesting name that sold off and, and friday turned out to be a really really good session was tesla right you guys remember on wednesday's session when the, when the market was selling off towards the end of the day and i said towards the end of the video i go Oh, by the way, don't think we forgot about you. We didn't, and that's the whole point. If you look at the candles, right? If you look at these candles, these two candles right here, or actually even maybe three candles right here, usually you see these type of candles right at the open, right? Usually when the first hour off that first pivot area, you see that at the open. Usually you don't see this type of, and this is what it looked like liquidation, right? If you traded Tesla, and this is a phenomenal move for us on Friday, if you traded Tesla, you knew this looked like it was liquidation mode. It went from literally for an hour, for about two hours, it went from 222 all the way down to 203. On no news, right? Without, you know, it, again, it's very, very odd, okay? Really, really odd that you see this type of move with no, with absolutely no news. Uh, there was a couple of noticeable bets that stood out. There was, you know what, I don't want to mess this up. Let me just give, let me get, read you guys off my notes. There was a bet that came in, okay, for Tesla for the December 180s, right? For the December 180s. So that wasn't that crazy. It was still $40 out of the money. But there was this one bet that came in for the February 165 puts for $3.8 million in premium. I mean, is it possible somebody knows something? It's all very possible. I don't like to speculate. I don't like to, um, you know, I don't like to try to guess what's happening. I know the whole saga with Elon and Twitter and this, that, the third, but price action speaks the loudest. The options market was betting definitely in that direction into strength before the pull. And hey, you know, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if something does come out uh, after, you know, after the weekend at some point next week. To kind of to kind of see, I mean, this looked like some sort of forced liquidation. I mean, the market was was ripping higher, and, and this thing was just absolutely getting, uh, as they say in the Disney in the Disney library, double fisted. So, uh, very very aggressive uh, action there. Uh, like again, like I said, the cloud names got completely annihilated, and now the question is, what happens next, right? So let's look at the indexes, and we'll kind of try to make things, you know, try to make things a little bit more clear. So this week alone, we failed, when I say we, the NASDAQ composite or the Qs, they failed to reclaim the 50-day moving average as everything else, the other three groups, they did, right? The other three major benchmarks, they did. They lost, the, they lost this whole range here. If you've been watching the video since Monday, we talked about how important this 272 level was, and it lost it and then followed through. You still have the leaders, right? You still have the leaders absolutely getting you know, destroyed throughout the week. And oh, by the way, the one silver lining, the one, you know, the one knight in shining armor that actually tried to save the market, Apple, well, they kind of turned around and say, ah, eh, maybe it wasn't that great, right? We're talking about a move from Apple in from Tuesday, from 155 to 134. And it gives a really, really definitive line in the sand here kind of going forward. If you look at Friday's low, you know, the low here was 
if you look at the low from uh, October the 12th was 134.37, right? Tell me technical analysis is, is, is just a random thing. So if they start continue going in after the leaders for, for, the next, for the next week, again, it's very, very tough to paint a rosy picture, at least in the technology space. Again, the Dow guys has, has his own thing going. The S&P has his own things. You know, the banks are actually looking pretty good. I mean, look at, look at, look at the run on Bank of America. Right. I mean, this is a pretty, you know, pretty aggressive, you know, look at the ba- run on, on uh, you know, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs. But if you look at technology and again, just for me, right, for me alone, uh, that is where the sweet spot is. That is my uh, specific um, lane. That is my niche. And I don't go uh, I don't go um, uh, I don't go out of my lane. You know what I mean? I don't go out of my lane. I don't look to, to trade other names that I don't feel comfortable, that I don't have some sort of. Uh, relationship with some history with and I don't know uh, their d- tendencies that's why I always say uh, you know first of all I trade 95 90 95 percent of all my trades are the same 10 stocks so I always say when you trade random stocks and unfortunately that's what happens when you were first uh, you know in this business for the first two three four years you're gonna get random results and that's why I kind of try to stick to uh, my lane so let's talk about it right so the QQQs now for for the Q's to be good or for 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 a potential snapback in technology, we would have to get above this 271, 272 level on the Qs, right? This level right here, uh, this level right here, this 259 level becomes an additional area that you know you have to be conscious on. If you are especially a perma bull and you got caught up with all the selling uh, last week, you got to watch that 59 because if they start confirming 59, then we go all the way back down to the October 13 lows. Uh, which is 254. And if we close below 254, again, I don't have to tell you what happens later uh, because again, the only way a market rallies, significantly rallies, is to get above the 50 day and stays above the 50 day. And kind of like, let's go back into the S&P now, right? S&P uh, got above the 50 day, st- stood three days above 50 day, but a couple days ago, they just weren't having it. You know, They just couldn't sustain it. Uh, and they lost, right? They lost the 50-day moving average. And now this is day three below the 50 days. So for the bulls in the SPY to get aggressive again, right? And start a rally back into the holiday season, they need to reclaim 381, right? 381 to go back to the top of the range here. Now, here's the, the other side of the equation. The low for the week is roughly <clears throat> 368.79, right? If the spies start losing this 368.79 level, then we go all the way down to 363. If they lose 363, you have another 10 point uh, drop in the spoos. Uh, the IWM, I really don't want to cover. Uh, the diamonds so far are holding up really, really well. Uh, all the consumer cyclicals, the banks, the brokers, the insurance companies, they're hanging on really, really well. Uh, and this is the only one of the, all the groups that actually held the 10 day. Not even, they, they didn't even come close. Uh, to the 50-day moving average. So again, you kind of see a continuation of disconnect continues in the market. And this is why I always say for a long, long time, guys, there's no such thing as a stock market anymore, right? Uh, it's no such thing as a stock market. Now we just have a market full of stock. It's like going to the grocery store, right? When you go to the, you know, to the supermarket, you don't buy everything, right? Like when somebody says on social media, yo man, just buy everything, right? When you go to the grocery store, you don't buy everything. You buy what you need, right? You buy your bread, you buy your cheese, your water, your seltzer, whatever, you know, whatever it is, your vegetables, and then you move along. So now we are experiencing a very individualized, uh, specific market of stocks. And I think going forward until they start correlating again that everything starts moving i think you have to assume that this week is going to continue and again i think more of arbitrage traders this week are probably still looking uh, at a scenario of you know long diamond short the queues i mean that's what's been working uh definitely for the last two and a half weeks does that continue right does that continue this week maybe right maybe again if you know i i try to uh i try to give a very unbiased uh, view every single day. I'm not a bull. I'm not a bear. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a realist and I go where technical analysis uh, tells me to go. So we'll see, you know, we'll see. As of right now, it's very, very tough to get uh, excited about technology. But again, you never know. That's how crazy this market is. Things drop at a dime, they turn on a dime. And next thing you know, your bias switches uh, very, very quickly. So that's why you have to be uh, incredibly open-minded. So let's talk about it. So the Dow is up 400 points, right? The Dow is up 400 points. Uh, the S&P was up 50, and the Nasdaq was up 132 points. And if you notice here, pre-market at Morning Strategy, and again, for all you guys who are uh, for all you guys who are joining us 
uh, this week, uh, either in the live webinar or in the Squawk Box. Welcome aboard. Please use this weekend an opportunity to go through uh, the PS60 workshops. There's a lot of information there. There's a lot of moving parts considering we're the only ones who trade it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, unique and proprietary way of looking at the market and it's definitely not uh, the normal. So if you are coming aboard this week, welcome aboard. Um, so if you notice, everything we had was to the short side, like literally, like everything we had. Matter of fact, uh, matter of fact, I, I, I wrote right before the market opened up, I go, I'll put in upside pivots as they developed. That was a 400, right? NASDAQ was up 130. I'm still waiting for those upside pivots. And that's the whole point. You don't trade the market, you trade individual setups. So let's talk about it. You're going to see all these uh, cloud names, for the exception of Chewy and Apple, all these cloud names, right? TTD, 4788, if it builds below, can flush, right? Here's TTD, right? Takes out the 4788, goes all the way down to 44. Does that sound like a market that is up on the day? Maybe somewhere else, but not in technology. Chewy held twice the 50-day, right? 50-day is a very, very important level. If it builds below, can flush, right? Chewy, 35, right? This has nothing to do with beta. This has nothing to do with with um, you know cloud names, software, right? It took out the 35, traded all the way up down to 31.89. Again, doesn't feel like a strong market. Apple, in case it gives up its gains, 138.75, if it builds below, can flush. Apple got destroyed, okay? Again, doesn't sound like a great market to me. So Apple takes out the 38.75, goes down to 134, puts in a, a, a double bottom off the October 13 lows. Again, this is a massive line in the sand in case this market gets weaker this week. But again, just absolutely destruction in Apple. DDOG, another cloud's name, 74.30, 74. gave up its gains from earnings from the previous day, and then it took out the previous day's channel of 74.38, went all the way down to 68. That's a, a huge move, man, considering how strong the market was. Snow, again, you kind of get the theme. 145.50, 145, if it builds below, can flush. Here was snow, right? Here was snow, took out this 145.50, went all the way down to 129. Again, they, these stocks were acting like there was a, a mutual fund liquidation, like like the Nasdaq was down a thousand. This is the one that went just 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 got hammered, and it was definitely I couldn't trade this one. It was way too thin. One twelve twenty five bill. If it builds below, can flush another uh, cloud name. Look at this thing, right? It took out the one twelve twenty five, went down to ninety eight, right? Torture, absolute torture in the stock. Uh, like I said, I'll put in upside pivots as they develop. Again. It's Saturday, it's uh, four, almost 10 to five in the afternoon. I'm still waiting for those upside pivots. NET, 45, 60 below, if it can flush. You got, I mean, just, just destruction in these stocks, right? Here's NET, took out the 45, 60, went all the way down to 39, uh, 39. Really, really big move there as well. And then uh, Disney only went down like 20, 30 cents. ZI, I made a cup of coffee on ZI before they killed it later. It went down to like 28. But this was right here. This right here. Remember Wednesday's video? And I said, hey, don't think we forgot about you. We didn't forget about it. So if you guys were watching Tesla on Thursday, they kept on defending 214 on 10 consecutive 60-minute candles. Let me show you. Let me show you here, all right? Let me show you here. You see this whole area here? Check this out. Look how many candles, look how many candles they defended 214. 214, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven hours, eight hours, right? Nine hours, 10 hours. You had 10 hours of data of them defending 214. So basically, if it builds below 214, it can flush. And boy, oh boy, dare we say, yeah, it flushed. Absolute destruction, uh, went all the way down to 203. We gotta watch this thing, guys. We gotta absolutely watch this thing for next week. Um, there's a very, very good chance, especially if they, they start coming in with very aggressive put buying deep out of the money. There's a shot here that if it starts really confirming fr um, Friday's channel, it can go all the way down to this 198 area. And if that breaks, you know, the, the, the dam breaks, the levee breaks, and next thing you know, uh, there's a there's a little bit of moisture 
on your hands. So that's it, everybody. You know, again, beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. Was the market up on Friday? Was the market down? It all depends who you ask. Guys, God bless. Have a safe weekend. And God's help, I will see you all Monday. Take care.